So the straight punch is probably the most basic exercise you could probably find for practicing fudging. So we'll start with that one. And there's something I want to explain to you about how we're going to move our bodies as we do this punch, though. Um, you've probably used a towel before, got it wet, rolled it up, and then used it to, I don't know, hit something or someone, which probably wasn't too nice. But you understand the concept of rolling up a towel and whipping it out and having it pop when it gets to the end. This one isn't wet, so it's not probably going to pop very well. But um, I figured I would use it for an illustration. Now, you've probably noticed, if you were going to use the towel to hit something, that you go out with the hand and whip it back. You don't go like that. Because it just doesn't do as much when you do that. But if you go out and back, actually you get a good pop and it tends to hit harder. Now when we throw our punches, we want to use a very similar concept. We're of course going to establish our root first because that's so important in Tai Chi to have a solid root. We're going to generate that power coming up from the ground, from the root, through the waist. Then we're going to express it out in the hand. But you'll notice when that punch comes out that I don't push and stay there. Just like with the towel, I don't go out and just leave it out there. I go out and back. Now, when you throw this punch, you imagine that the hips are like the hand in the towel analogy. So my hand, I whip it out and pull back, and that makes the towel pop when it gets to the end. So what we're going to do is pretend that the hips are like the hand, and the fist and the arm is basically analogous to the towel. So when you push out with the hips, that's the initial part where the hand is coming out to get the momentum going for the towel, which is the arm and hand. Then you whip back with the hips to allow the fist to pop <laughs> when it gets out there. Now you want to be careful that you don't hyperextend your elbow when you do this, so you always keep a slight bend. You want to make sure you have good structure. Don't let the shoulder come up. Everything stays relaxed. But as you do this, you push with the hip to generate the momentum, and then you pull back so that you have more force in that punch when it comes out. So when we do these punches, we're going to use that exact same concept that we used with the towel to get more force out of the punches without having to do more work. So that's just kind of a rough analogy that will help you understand why we're doing what we're doing with the rest of our body as we're throwing these punches instead of just pushing straight out with the punch. Now some things you want to keep in mind while you're doing these punches is, like I said in the intro video, definitely don't use power at first. Be very light because especially if you haven't hit anything before, you're probably not used to what it feels like. You're not used to which knuckles you should hit with. You're not used to aligning your arms so that you don't hyperextend your elbow or roll your wrist and you don't want to injure yourself. Plus, you want to make sure you have good technique as you do it. So don't worry about the power for right now. Just worry about the technique and the power will come eventually. So if you're someone who hasn't punched before or hasn't punched in a while and needs a few um, pointers, the main thing to remember, if you're throwing a horizontal punch, make sure that you're hitting with the first two knuckles, so your index finger and your middle finger. The knuckles of these two fingers are the ones that you're aiming with when you throw that punch. Also make sure that you keep your wrist straight when you throw the punch. If I throw this punch and my wrist is bent down, that's not going to be good for my wrist. If it's bent up, that's also not going to be good for my wrist. Sides, same thing. So when you come out, you want to make sure it's lined up with the arm so that when this impact happens, the force that comes back toward me in my arm, because equal opposite reaction, here is lined up with the arm so that it can absorb that instead of my wrist absorbing it because it wasn't aligned properly. The next thing to understand is as you throw these punches, go ahead and try this with me if you're gonna be doing these exercises. Start with your hands at your hips and push out in front. Now notice how my arm stays right next to my side as it comes out and rotates as it goes until it reaches the end to where it's horizontal, knuckles pointing forward, palm pointing down. It doesn't do this. It doesn't come around. My elbow doesn't come out. It pushes straight out. You want everything right behind that punch. If I put the elbow out here, then I'm wasting energy coming out to the side that could be right behind this punch, helping it you know, have a little more oomph when it hits what I'm aiming at. So I'm going to make sure everything's behind this punch lined up so that when it comes out, I'm putting the most force into it with the least amount of effort. So if you have a punching bag that you can use for this exercise, that would be ideal. If you don't have a punching bag, you can put like a phone book 
in front. Well, I don't know if people even have phone books anymore. Um, but you could put, I don't know, several stacks of newspaper or something like that, maybe on a tree or on a beam of some kind. If you have a deck that has posts below it, you might be able to hang it on that. Um, just make sure whatever you put it on is really solid and make sure, especially if you're using like a stack of newspapers or a phone book, that you start really light with your punches because you have a lot less give than you do with something like a punching bag. I would recommend staying away from things like pillows because they tend to compress a lot and so you don't really have a good striking distance, or a good striking surface rather, until it's completely compressed and then you're hitting the hard thing that's behind it. You might as well just hit the hard thing that's behind it. So I wouldn't recommend pillows unless they're pretty dense pillows. So for this straight punch drill, we're gonna start in a horse stance and it doesn't have to be a deep horse stance. It depends on the strength of your legs and what you're wanting to get out of this. Um, also, it's not a bad idea to start a little bit higher so that you can work more on body mechanics without tiring out your legs and the lower you tend to stand the more tense you tend to be so you start to limit your body's motion as you go lower until you get used to being lower and you can still generate the same power so it's not a bad idea to start a little bit higher just have a slight bend in your knees and you'll start with your hands on either side of your hips palms up as relaxed fists so you don't want to be tense while you're here you get into this posture and you want to make sure everything kind of relaxes and sinks into this posture to judge your distance from the bag for this exercise. Go ahead and start in that horse stance, hands on either side of your hips, and then just reach out with one fist. And if it touches the bag and can push it a little bit, then you're at a pretty good spot for this exercise. Especially if you're not looking to generate a lot of power with it just yet, you're just looking for the technique, that's a good spot to be. If you want to put a little more oomph into it, you can stand closer, but you really don't have to stand that much closer to be able to put oomph into it as you're using fudging um, power. So we'll go into our horse stance, hands on either side of the hips. Now what I'm going to do, if you remember the towel analogy from a little bit earlier, is I'm going to push forward with my right hip. Now I'm going to super exaggerate this as I do it. You wouldn't do it this much, but this is just, just so you can see. So this force is coming from the right leg, pushing the hip forward. Now you notice if my hip turns, my whole body turns. So what I'm doing with that is I'm pushing that fist out with that motion. So as the body and the hips turn, that fist starts to come out. Now as the fist reaches about halfway there, I start to change my motion and I sink back to get back into that horse stance and my fist keeps going to express that power. So there's the whipping motion. Again, here's the towel, here's the hand. It comes out and back. So when this comes out and hits, by the time it hits, I'm finishing that settling down so that I'm square with the bag again. So you can start with one fist up, gently touching the bag. And remember, you're relaxed as you do this, so there's not a lot of tension. You're not pushing the bag and stopping with a lot of tension. You don't want your arms to be like an iron bar that's just kind of smacking into this bag. You want them to be more like a whip or like Bruce Lee said, you want them to be like a chain with an iron ball at the end of it so it whips out and hits instead of just pushing into whatever you're hitting. So at the end of your strike, you come out, your back basically square with the bag, your arm is relaxed and it was only tensed long enough for that impact and then it was relaxed again. So a lot of times what you'll see is a little bit of recoil where the hand actually pops back a little bit as that punch comes out there. So once again, we're gonna throw with the right hand. You start with the power coming from the right leg up to the hip, pushes the hip forward, the hip leads the hand, leads the body, and then you sink back as that fist is finishing its course out there, and you're relaxed at the end of it, and you're only tense for that split second. So it comes there. So if you're just working on the technique, you don't want to hit much harder than that. Once you're here, you're going to do the same thing. With the left side, you push the left hip forward. That pushes the arm out. And then before it gets there, you sink back and let it hit the bag and recoil a little. Now, something you want to be careful, like I mentioned before, is as you're doing this, don't let those elbows come out. You're not doing punches like this. You're doing punches like this. So as it comes out, there, and there.
Now that may not seem like much, and it's really not supposed to be at the beginning. You want to stay light. And you want to make sure you have good structure. You want to make sure you have the timing where the hips sink back at the end of it so that you get that whip out of it. Now when you've put a little bit more time into it and your body's starting to generate that power very naturally, you don't have to put a lot of oomph into it necessarily. You depend on that same motion, that body structure to put the oomph into it. So for your punch, you can use that same relaxed force to put more oomph into the punch. And the nice thing about these strikes is you can do that and not get worn out because you're not using a lot of extra tension. It's all about the body mechanics. It's all about that whipping motion as you come out. So once again, you want to start really light. Start in your horse stand. And remember, it can be deeper if you want it to be, but you have to make sure that you maintain that same body motion as you're doing these strikes and that you aren't stiffening up and locking up your hips by being down so low and just depending on the upper body for your punches. Stay relaxed, keep your structure, use the body motion to power each of these punches as they come out. Now this is the same strike, just at a different angle. So you square off with the bag in a horse stance, only as deep as you want it to be. Reach out, make sure you have the correct distance with the bag. I need to move forward a little bit here. So you can touch and just push a little bit on the bag. Then you lead, pushing from the right leg, push through the right hip, that directs the upper body, the arm comes out, and then you sink back as you make that contact. So lead with the left, sink, lead with the right, sink, lead with the left. So it's a pretty straightforward drill. The things to remember are to stay relaxed. Make sure your body motion is generating the force, not just your arm. Make sure that before you begin the exercise that you establish your root, that you're solid in your stance, and then you begin from the bottom throwing the punches out. You don't lead with the fist. You lead with the body. You lead with the hips. And that motion generates the power for the fist. Now in Tai Chi, we really stress making sure that movements come from the lower Dantian or the lower belly. And as you get used to this motion, just kind of the structural mechanics of it, and as you can kind of put it on autopilot a little bit, then what you want to do is really focus on the lower belly and really focus on the movements coming from there. So it's not so much thinking about the hip motion, it's not so much thinking about where the feet are and where the arm is, 
and that kind of goes on autopilot after you've done it a few times, well, a lot of times. And you can start focusing on the more internal component of it, so you can focus on that energy coming from the lower belly and traveling out through the fist instead of it just being a mechanical motion of the body. Now, whether you believe in chi or not, that mental image of moving that energy from the lower belly out through the arm to the fist and translating that into your opponent or the bag that you're striking is going to help your body move more coordinated as you do this strike because you have a, a kind of a mental picture that that ties everything together instead of just thinking oh I need to move my whole body together you think okay there's a flow that's coming from here and ending up here so even if you don't think that cheese is a real thing you can still benefit from that mental picture of moving from the lower belly, moving from the dantian and sending that energy from there out through the fist. And of course, if you do believe in chi, then it's not a great jump for you to make that mental image of moving that chi out through the fist. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video very helpful and I hope that it gives you some ideas of things that you can do with a punching bag that can help you develop your explosive power for your internal martial arts. So I want to tell you all about the latest product from the Pure Trim Company, at least this is the latest one as of the time of this filming. It's called Liver Master and it's basically an herbal blend for your liver. I'll tell you what I've noticed since I've started using it. Um, it's supposed to be used on like a, a 90 day kind of liver program that you can go on. And what I've noticed is that I sleep better and my energy seems to be a little bit more even through the day instead of having a lot of peaks and valleys It tends to just kind of carry through. So I don't know if you'll have the same um, experience, but it might be worth trying out. So you can find out more about Liver Master, what's in it, what it's used for, if you visit the website that's at the bottom of the screen. I hope you try it out, and I hope you learn to love it as much as I do. Check it out, Liver Master.